Yellowstone volcano, USGS reveals why the bubbling carbon dioxide could be a sign of magma intrusion, magma rising up, causing it to bulge. This is by Tom Fish, Express UK. The Yellowstone volcano, as we know, it's a supervolcano, and it possesses enough power to, if it has a super eruption, to decimate parts of the United States in the unlikely event of another super eruption. Researchers at the United States Geological Survey, USGS, now reveal the surprising way that they monitor the supervolcano. We know that hidden beneath Yellowstone National Park is a vast reservoir of hot magma. They believe it's the biggest reservoir in the world from what they've uh, ascertained up to now. It's fed by an enormous mass of molten rock welling up from hundreds of miles below the ground. We know that this magma corridor also comes from the U.S.-Mexico border. It's the same magma that is feeding the west coast, the coast of volcanic fields, salt and buttes, even Long Valley Caldera, and all the way up to uh, the geysers on the west coast, and also turning in around the Snake River Plain north east towards Yellowstone. So these are all connected. And um, it's fed by this mass molten rock welling up from hundreds of miles below the ground. The Yellowstone magma chamber has erupted three times previously with uh, super eruptions. And it's no surprise that Yellowstone continues to receive all this attention by USGS scientists and, of course, worldwide. We know that the Yellowstone Observatory was set up recently in 2001 after a documentary by the BBC that came out December 2000. And uh, up to then it was, I think, it was the, uh, the army that was in charge of it. Anyway, they set up the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and they have over 60% of the world's geysers there and over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. Uh, so they have a lot of work to do. Every week they come out with the Caldera Chronicles and we'll um, see what they have to do today, what, what is uh, coming out today. Now, there is a remote chance of uh, this volcano erupting, but nevertheless, the geologists have to monitor it very tightly. Uh, we've had a very significant change last year, since last March, the steamboat geyser of the Norris Geyser Basin has been uh, erupting almost every week. Now this thing here is the deformation from a GPS station around the Yellowstone caldera. And you, you see that it's going southwest and it's basically inflating. The next one is over the caldera and you can see it's going every which way. It started uh, going east, southeast, and then it started going uh, southwest. In the beginning around 2004 was inflating and going every which way and now it's deflating. This is uh, basically showing us that the area over the caldera, basically around the lake, Yellowstone Lake, is really changing and deforming and heaving or breathing as some of the geologists would say. It's changing quite a lot. Now concerning the carbon dioxide emissions in Yellowstone. Why is USGS monitoring this? And from one of the past articles and videos we made, we know that Yellowstone is emitting 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide daily. 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide every day is coming out of Yellowstone. Um, because of the fact that it's so much, the geologists had to examine why it was so much, and they found it was because of the fact that it has such a huge magma reservoir underneath. That's how they found the magma reservoir. It was not just the magma chamber. But going back to this, uh, what's in this article, the uh, carbon dioxide emitted from the supervolcano, Yellowstone is an important gas to monitor because it offers vital data about the behavior of the magma underneath the surface. 
and measuring the quantities of carbon dioxide that's emitted from Yellowstone and how it changes over time is useful because it provides hints about the possible changes in the depth of the magma. USGS wrote in a statement much like a bottle of soda, a soda pop, which contains CO2, carbon dioxide, dissolved in the liquid. CO2 and other gases are dissolved in the magma here in Yellowstone. When the cap is tight on the soda bottle, the pressure inside the bottle is high and the CO2 remains dissolved in the soda. And when the cap is taken off, the pressure in the liquid decreases, the CO2 bubbles out of the liquid and it releases into the air. The carbon dioxide has traditionally been measured by collecting gas samples. It's, they're analyzed uh, by chemical composition in the laboratory. But to better understand how the carbon dioxide and other volcanic gas emissions change over time, measurements have to be made all year round with automated instruments. The good news is for those uh, affected in the unlikely event of another Yellowstone eruption, the evidence shows that concentrations and emissions have been relatively stable. Now what would happen if Yellowstone erupted again? If the supervolcano of Yellowstone ever experienced another massive eruption, it could spew ash for thousands of miles, as we know, across the United States. It would decimate the vast swaths of the U.S. A 2014 paper revealed Yellowstone was capable of burying states like Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, which are, of course, surrounding the supervolcano, and Colorado, or with over three feet of deadly volcanic ash. Uh, one of the USGS scientist Jacob Lowenstern, one of the study's co-authors, stressed that uh, in this paper uh, that uh, there was not any sort of a prediction of the future that this would happen. He said even if Yellowstone did erupt again, you probably would not get that uh, worst case scenario. What's much more common are small eruptions. That's a point that often gets ignored in the press, he says. The quantity of ash would, of course, devastate almost all of life on the surface if it were a super eruption. Uh, it would wipe out important infrastructure, destroy properties. And, of course, thankfully, the odds of this happening for a fourth time are low. The supervolcano, thousands of times more powerful than volcanoes, has only had three truly enormous eruptions recently in the past two million years. The first, according uh, to USGS, it was, happened 2.1 million years ago. After that, it was 1.3 million years ago. And the most recent super eruption, 664,000 years ago. There was another major eruption 70,000 years ago, and another 80 eruptions after the 70,000 year ago eruption, basically every 6,000 years. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.